Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the election results from Tuesday night. Uh, I'll be looking at them. You know, I talked for 10 minutes in specific about Kentucky the night of the election, but I do now want to look broadly at the results that are now fully in. We have our, uh, you know, essentially final margins, maybe a few more uh, absentee, maybe military ballots that are yet to come in, but they're not going to affect the results of any of the races I'll be talking about today. So let's get into it. This is our 2023 election day recap. Um, and broadly, my takeaway is just as a whole looking at all the results, I think it was a better night for Democrats than I was expecting. Now, I was already expecting it to be a decent night. I said Bashir was going to win Kentucky. I said they were going to win uh, or the more left wing side was going to win both referendums in Ohio. I said they were going to take back the Virginia legislature. And I said that Mississippi um, or, and I said Pennsylvania, I'll me a second, but I said Pennsylvania was going to be a uh, win for Democrats as well. So I was already expecting a decent night for Democrats, but I think that they exceeded my expectations in most states. And um, if you watch back uh, my video, I did a long a 27 minute video, uh, I think the day or two or yeah, I, I think I recorded the day before when I posted it the day of the elections and I off my predictions and I said, Democrats are in a good position here because they have a lot of elections that uh, they can really win that they're favored to win, but they can't mess up and they didn't mess up. And again, in some places like Mississippi, they did a lot better than anyone could have expected them to do. So I'll start out with Kentucky here. Um, and if you want a more in-depth look at this race, I did it on luck uh, on election night because uh, it, it was called with like 90 or 80 percent in then with, you know, 90 percent. in, I filmed a video and actually on my screen, you could see the votes coming in as I talked. But at that point, Bashir had won and the margin has really changed him up. So he's going to win by five percent, uh, roughly a margin uh, in terms of votes of 67,000, which is pretty impressive. It's uh, much more than his 7000 vote margin from last time. And so what you'll notice here is he did really well merging the coalitions of Democrats in the suburbs, right, like in Jefferson and in Fayette, which is where Louisville and Lexington are. And then if you go up to the northern part of the state on the kind of the Cincinnati border region, he uh, came close in Boone County, and he also won Kenton County and Campbell County, um, both of which were, I think, pretty solid for Donald Trump in 2020. And so he also held on to some of the ancestrally Democratic coal counties. Elliott County is a good example of this, voted for like every Democratic candidate dating back to like the 1920s and 30s and voted for Trump by 50 points in 2020. Bashir won it by six. It's obviously a small county, uh, only, you know, 1,500 votes cast, but still interesting nonetheless. And then you go over to these other counties, uh, Bourbon, Nicholas, uh, Bath, Powell, Wolf, McGothan, you know, like you can look at all of them. Uh, Pike's another one. And Bashir won most of these. And, you know, they're light blue. But if you look at a 2020 map, which I won't do too much because it's Kentucky, it's, it's only uh, part of the uh, video, but D Donald Trump won all these counties by like 50, 60 points. And they're small, right? Like uh, Bath County cast less than 4,000 votes in this election. Bashir won by like, you know, what did I say, 67,000? So they're small counties and they don't mean like an individual result from one of these counties doesn't mean much, but they will add up and they can show pretty interesting trends. And the fact that Bashir held on to a lot of these working class Democratic voters or Republican voters who haven't really been favorable to the Democratic Party for the past decade, that says a lot. And and I I, I, I would say that this is a very, very impressive showing because obviously Bashir is popular. He was expected to win. But for him to do that in the coal country and the rural areas that are socially conservative, super pro Trump, for him to do that just three years after they voted for Trump by 50, 60 points in some cases, that's pretty impressive no matter how you slice it. So um, I guess the good news for Republicans in Kentucky is that there were other elections. Um, Russ Coleman won the AG race by 16. This is actually closer than I thought it would be. I thought he'd win by like 23 or 24. He won it by 16. Um, and he actually lost to County Trump won. He lost Franklin, which Trump carried by a couple points. Uh, and then the Secretary of State race was a bit more favorable to Republicans. They won it by 21. And then uh, Agricultural Commissioner, Republicans won by 18. Auditor was, uh, the I think, the best showing for Republicans. They won it by 22. And then Treasurer, uh, they won by 14. So it is worth noting that some of these races were actually closer than you'd think because Donald Trump won Kentucky by 26. And the best performance was a 22-point win. So not a single Republican even came close to matching what Donald Trump did in 2020. And in some cases, they were actually, like, you know, well within the mid-teens. Like, this is a 16-point victory. This is a 14-point victory. So... The electorate that showed up was obviously pro Bashir. They were also probably more Democratic than the 2020 electorate. So that's something to note. Now, 
Kentucky was kind of the biggest, or the governor's race probably the biggest election of the night, but there are some more um, things I want to talk about here. Let's go to Ohio, where we had the issue one race. Uh, it was a, a referendum, and if it passed, which it did, uh, it would have enshrined abortion rights in the Ohio Constitution. And so fifty, it was pretty similar to the prop or to the issue one from August election, a pretty similar coalitions too. Uh, 57% said yes, 43% said no. And you'll notice a lot of the counties that voted for Trump uh, were in favor of enshrining abortion rights. So let's go through this region by region. Uh, in 2020, Biden only won, I want to say, eight counties statewide in Ohio. He won, uh, you know, I'll say by city, Cincy, Dayton, Columbus, uh, Toledo, Cleveland, and then Akron down here. Uh, and then a Athens, which is where the universe, I think, yeah, uh, I want to say Ohio University is. And then... Um, I think he might have won one more. He might have won. No, he, he didn't win Lorraine, but he won something else I'm probably forgetting about. Uh, but, you know, regardless, a lot of the close counties from 2020 were very favorable to uh, to keeping abortion legal. Portage County voted for Trump by like 14 or 15 points, maybe I think maybe 19 if I'm not mistaken. 22% uh, in favor of enshrining abortion rights. Lorraine County voted for Trump very narrowly by like 0.1%, 24% in favor of enshrining abortion rights. Wood County voted for Trump by 8 10% for abortion rights. And then you go to the suburbs, right? Like, let's talk with Delaware, which is a rapidly left-running county that I think Biden could actually win next year. He lost it by six in 2020. Clinton lost it by, like, 13 in 2016. Then Obama lost it by, like, 20 points in 2012, if not more. Um, Delaware County uh, was 18% in favor of enshrining abortion rights. Let's go to North Cincinnati. Butler County, very narrow here, uh, 51 to 49 in favor of enshrining abortion rights. This is still a Trump plus 25, 30 county, so pretty impressive showing there. And then let's go to the working class areas. Mahoning County right here uh, voted for Obama by like 30 points, voted for Hillary Clinton by two, voted for Trump by one in 2020. It's, you know, 56-44 in favor of enshrining abortion rights. So I'm going to say this was a pretty impressive showing all around for the pro-choice side. Uh, and yet, you know, consistently pro-choice pro um, pro choice referendums and propositions and ballot initiatives always do well. They did well in Kansas. They did well in Montana. They did well in um uh, Kentucky, and they're going to do well in Ohio. So that's another big victory. There was also a referendum on legalizing weed in Ohio, and uh, that was also favorable to the pro-weed side in a pretty similar fashion, although I don't want to talk about it as much because I think it's a bit less electorally uh, intriguing, I guess you could say. But nonetheless, it's another victory for the more progressive um, you know, kind of side of things. Now, let's go to Virginia, where a lot was at stake because it, it, if Republicans won both these chambers, they would have had a trifecta they would have been able to legislate very very effectively now democrats were coming in expected to likely win the state senate maybe win the house of delegates uh, or delegates um but you know this was more in doubt i'd say a lot of people did actually expect republicans to hold on to it um but uh democrats came in uh and they won it was narrow it, it you know it wasn't a slam dunk these results actually aren't like amazing for democrats but they got the job done and then in the competitive races democrats were able to hold on um, so just to kind of go over to a few of the uh, closer races in the 57th House District, Susanna Gibson went down to David Owen. Um, you know, that was a race that was very controversial due to uh, Republicans leaking images of Susanna Gibson, uh, her previous occupation, or I, I, I won't say occupation, but her previous, um, one of the ways she made money in the past was by, I believe, doing OnlyFans and uh, obviously Republicans attempted to take advantage of that they actually leaked images of her uh and they spread them around i think they were in they mailed them it, to constituents of the district which i thought was um you know quite frankly i don't i don't know how that's allowed especially considering that's content that could be seen by children that you wouldn't necessarily want children to see so i am not necessarily sure how that happened i it's probably legal but i'm, I'm i really don't know why it's legal or how ethical that is regardless this isn't uh, a video i'm talking about my opinion and let's talk about this race uh this was a close one republicans won it they were expected to win it narrowly and they don't, uh, got the job done there uh and then uh in the 65th district i believe this is uh not is it tom cole it might have been tom cole um but I don't know the full thing about this district, but this was another close race. Democrats were able to win. And so we do have one race outstanding. It's Taylor, uh, the Republican incumbent, leading Adams, the Democrat here. Again, as you can tell, I don't know a ton about these candidates individually, but I do kind of know where they are geographically. And we saw Democrats do pretty well in Virginia Beach. They did well in Richmond, um, but they did not do as well in Nor Northern Virginia, Nova, which is an area where they've been doing well in the past. But 
um, you know, maybe lost a bit of steam this year. Regardless, it's 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 a win. They've clinched the majority in the House of Delegates, and thus Yon- uh, Yonkin is essentially a, a sitting duck for the time being. He can't really legislate as effectively as he would like to, in all likelihood. And as a result, we're probably going to see him kind of lack any big, um, you know, landmark achievements uh, in, in Virginia, right? Like anything related to abortion or anything super conservative on those issues. So that's what I wanted to talk about, or at least what was at stake for the uh, election in Virginia. Now let's talk about Pennsylvania. This is another race where abortion was uh, kind of on the ballot in a way. Also, Democrats won Philadelphia. I mean, our race by actually close than expected. This is not a great margin um, for Cheryl Parker. She probably should have gotten 80% of the vote. She got 75. doesn't really matter, though. Uh, obviously, a very blue city. Um, but let's go to the Supreme Court elect, which was a good showing for Democrats. Dan McCaffrey uh, ousted, not ousted, no incumbent, but uh, he fended off a challenge from Carolyn Carluccio, uh, who actually, if you look at the map, actually did pretty well in a lot of the areas where Democrats did well last year, like Erie County, she narrowly carried. She also won Luzerne County by a good amount. And then uh, in the areas surrounding Pittsburgh, uh, you know, West Merlin County, she won by 12. Shapiro came within 3% of winning that last time. Washington County, she won by 10. Beaver County, she won by 6. So she did okay. You know, no disaster here, I'd say, for Republicans. But at the end of the day, Pennsylvania State, Donald, Donald Trump won by, you know, 1% in 2016. Republicans won a Senate race there in 2016. It's supposed to be competitive. This isn't what you want. You know, you're losing statewide by, what, 6.6%. That's not a very good margin. And I look, you know, look, I, I know McCaffrey was favored to win here, but uh, this is a, you know, 200,000 vote margin. And I just really don't think Republicans are going to be happy with this. Um, Carluccio, uphill battle, uh, wasn't really a ton of energy for Republicans in this race. I would say Democrats were favored at every point in time. But there was so it could be close, maybe maybe 48, 49 percent of the vote. But she's not even get to 47, which is, again, disappointing. And then you look at where she crashed. She was from Montgomery County, um, I believe, which is right here north of Philadelphia. She didn't even get 35 percent of the vote there. She got crushed. Chester County, she lost by 18 percent. And that's more than Donald Trump lost it by. And this is a local down ballot Supreme Court election. Usually these suburbs are more favorable to Republicans in down ballot races. In this case, McCaffrey won Chester by 18, which is more than Joe Biden won it by in 2020. And in 2020, everyone was saying, look, Joe Biden won Chester County by 17. That's crazy. No way that any Democrat does that locally until 2024. It happened in in the, it happened in the Senate race. It happened in the governor race. It just happened in the Supreme Court race. So my biggest takeaway here, obviously Democrats won. They're happy about that. But the Philadelphia suburbs are really, really bad for Republicans. It's code red. They cannot win statewide if they're going to keep doing this. And look, right, Carolyn Coluccio lost by six and a half. That's a lot, right? Like if if Biden wins Pennsylvania by six and a half last, next year, he probably wins the election by a lot because that's a huge margin considering he only won it by 1.2% in 2020. That's a five-point increase. So um, Republicans not only have to work on improving and you stop getting crushed in the Philly metro area, but they also have to work on, you know, really making uh, making it up in other areas. Carluccio showed that even if you win Erie County, even if you do okay in the uh, Pittsburgh collar, you can't make it up if you're getting crushed in the Philly suburbs, which is the where the population is. So- that's a big loss for Republicans. I think this actually, even more so than Kentucky, is concerning for Republicans because this is a more um, even race in the sense that Democrats were the incumbents in Kentucky and they were a the popular governor there. In Pennsylvania, no such factor existed. It was just a Democrat versus Republican race in a judicial sense, and Democrats dominated. They did really well in the most important areas. So I do want to finish by talking about a Republican victory, though. Mississippi, um, they haven't highlighted him yet. I don't know why, but he, you know, they called him the winner, obviously, a while ago. Um, so uh, someone actually, I, I, I want to talk about this first. Someone t- commented on my previous video saying, ha, huh, like, why don't you talk about Republican victories? And I was confused because I was like, well, like, what do you want me to talk about? I, I posted this video at 10 o'clock Eastern time, like, half an hour after Bashir won. And at that point, we barely even knew, like, I think like a third of the vote was in Mississippi. So I don't, I don't know what he just wanted me to talk about, but, you know, he replied and told me, um, talk about Louisiana. And so Louisiana, which was a Republican victory in a decisive fashion, uh, happened in October. But I was like, well, what's there to talk about? Like, it's a red state where Democrats didn't even put in a dime. Like, obviously they were going to lose. And so now I'm realizing that he wants me to talk about Mississippi because this race has officially been called. And I'll talk about it, but I just don't think it's that great of a showing for Republicans. Tate Reeves, incumbent governor, won by less than he did in 2019. And in 2019, he only won by five points. It was really bad to begin with. Jim Hood, who was the former attorney general, he ran for the Democrats last time. He did a really good job of, um, you know, getting some crossover support among Republicans. 
I, when I saw that performance, you know, back in 2019, I was like, okay, well, there's no way this is ever going to happen again. This is a really good showing for the Democrats. And then it happened four years later, and it was even closer with the Republicans as the incumbent party. This is really, really bad for Tate Reeves. Look, he won. Republicans are not in danger in Mississippi. It's a deep red state. I do not think they have anything to be concerned about, at least statewide. But this is just an embarrassing margin, if, if we're being honest, right? Like, you know, in politics, there's no moral victories. But um, this is the 2007 Patriots playing the 26, 2017 Browns and winning by a field goal at the end of the game. So um, to me, this isn't a great sign for Republicans in general. As, as you can see, Brandon Presley uh, got 47% of the vote here in a state that Trump won by 16 last time. And then he did very well all across the state. He held his own in a lot of the rural areas. Didn't do amazing in the suburbs, you know. Uh, go to Harrison County. He didn't do amazing. He also didn't do amazing in DeSoto. I think he could have done better in those places. But the rural areas, which could be more of a local thing, but uh, there were some rural counties that were pretty favorable to Trump that voted for Presley. He also came close to winning counties like Winston, which I think voted for Trump by upwards of 20 points. So in a lot of the rural counties, Mississippi, Tate Reeves lost ground. He also really... Uh, performed poorly in Hines County. That's where Jackson is. Jackson came out big for Brandon Presley, more so than I think anyone could have predicted. And then uh, in the rural Delta counties, which are uh, you know mostly black uh, voters, there these counties are uh, majority black, uh, very strong for Presley as well, stronger than I think a lot of people were expecting. So Presley, you know, credit him. Obviously, this is still a loss. I think he's disappointed to see it, but um, this is nothing to be ashamed of. He took a really hostile state to Democrats. It's very, very polarized in Mississippi along racial lines. White voters are super Republican. Black voters tend to turn out for Democrats. But, you know, he got the turnout he needed from black voters, and he did well enough in rural areas. He just couldn't get the, uh, you know, couldn't get the job done in the suburbs. So um, close race, Mississippi. I would have liked to talk about it more in retrospect. Had I known it was going to be this close, I would have talked about it more because I was predicting Reeves to win by nine. He won by less than, or he won by half of that. So I was wrong. This is a race I wasn't really particularly proud of my prediction for, but I still, you know, overall, Tate Reeves did win. So that's the victory for Republicans over the night, but not really one if you look at how they did relative to last time and how, um, you know, Tate Reeves did relative to Donald Trump. But regardless, I don't want to make this video too long. I just wanted to recap the results for you. I'd say uh, all of these showing takes that maybe Virginia were over performances for Democrats of considerable proportions. Virginia was probably about what you'd expect, but it's still a victory for Democrats. Republicans obviously held Mississippi, but not by the best margin, by less than I was expecting. And overall, I think there's a lot of work Republicans have to do heading into 2024, especially on issues like abortion, on issues related to social, you know, social issues really in general, because that's why they keep getting crushed in these races. They can't message properly. Go watch my Kentucky video from Tuesday night where I talked with Daniel Cameron why I think he failed in his campaign. I think a big part of that was social issues too. So, um, let you know, let me know what you think. Let me know uh, what you're expecting uh, from these elections. Like, what are your takeaways? Obviously, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, give me suggestions for future videos, and I'll see you all in the next one.